Disc jockey, drop the bass. Now the heads. Doesn't it kind of feel like the 80s again to you? Yeah, you know, a, a shameless, power-grabbing female prime minister riding roughshod over everything, wanting to destroy what's left of the fabric of our society that still remains after the 80s. Jingoism, racism, xenophobia, even if that's not everyone that's being dragged along for the ride, and it isn't. And this kind of almost willful, self-destructive element to the way people are voting. The council elections that we've just had are an absolute shower. You have to be careful predicting from them what that means from the, from the general election, but there doesn't seem to have been a big protest vote against the Tories. There doesn't seem to have been the bump that I would have expected, that most people would have expected for the Liberal Democrats, given their anti-Brexit stance. And Labour have done about as bad as you would expect them to. None of this bodes well for the general election, even though it's going to be different in many ways. And yet still, as many people have pointed out, the turnout's been incredibly low, 25 to 30 percent, it looks like, possibly a little bit higher once it's all been counted. There's nothing. It's not that surprising. We've got the general election coming up, which is more glamorous, I suppose. That's, some, that's an aspect to it. Council elections never have as high a turnout. And having all, this, all these elections and all this political activity so close together has worn people out on the whole thing. But still, the other thing that they pointed out alongside this low turnout issue is that the majority of the country is not pro-conservative. The conservatives are about 35%, fairly steadily, which means, you know, 65% of people are not really on that right wing side of the spectrum. So if that's the case, how come the Tories keep winning? They have a sense of loyalty, they, they stick together, they work together, they swallow their pride, they, you know, they push down their ambitions, they act more pragmatically. Whereas if we look to the left, we can see people are divided, even though they all broadly agree that they don't like what the Tories are doing, they're unwilling to set aside their own personal interests for the sake of a greater interest. And that's really the reason. The left gets split apart, refuses to work together. This idea of a progressive alliance that the Greens and to a lesser extent the Liberal Democrats have been putting forward, yeah, some of that's self-interest. They'll, they'll do better from that if they can get people to go along with it. Labour's protested against it because they stand to lose a little bit from it. But the country stands to gain if, if the left can come together as a whole, the left and the moderate centrists can come together as a whole and oppose the Tories. Surely this council election should be a warning sign to do that and parties should withdraw candidates that would split the vote against the Tories. You would think it would make tactical sense. Then maybe we can get a coalition left-wing government in. What I don't understand, what I really don't understand is why people keep voting against their own self-interest, against the interest of their country, of their community and of themselves. That's what I found hard to stomach during the Thatcher era and after, and that's what I find hard to stomach here as well. And just how much cost they're willing to take for the sake of a single issue. Okay, so for whatever reason you don't like the European Union and you, you backed Brexit, even if you're otherwise, you know, reasonably progressive, liberal and left-wing. Okay, fair enough. Let's not get into it. Let's, you know, let's forget that argument itself. But just how much are you willing to pay to see that go through? We've already seen huge amounts of damage to the economy. It's going to gut even the service industries and the, and the banking industries that we've come stupidly to rely on, which is possibly going to turn us into a kind of financial services Venezuela in the near future, unfortunately. That's the trouble with having you know, mono economies. But I'm straying already. So given all, all that damage we've already seen, all the damage we're likely to incur, okay, maybe you accept that as, as an okay price of Brexit. But even so, why are you willing to back the Tories 
purely on the basis that they're willing to go for a hard Brexit? And why are you willing to accept all the rest of the damage that we're going to see? The selling off of the NHS, the gutting of education, further austerity, further gutting of, of communities that's going to increase social unrest, poverty, food poverty, fuel poverty and other problems. Are you really willing to do that much damage just to see Brexit through? And that makes it very hard not to see you as xenophobic, at least, if not racist. Blaming foreigners. I place as much blame on the left for failing to have these arguments and failing to put forward alternative solutions as I, as I do anyone else. But, but still, how much damage is it going to take? How much threat from the Tories to the infrastructure and the warp and weft of our society is it going to take? For you to say, no, the cost is too high, or that's too much. Why not vote? Why not vote Labour? I mean, all right, Corbyn is unelectable, largely because people keep calling him unelectable. But yeah, he's wishy-washy. He's not the most charismatic guy. He vacillated on, on Europe and so on. But, you know, a well-meaning incompetent has got to be better than a competent political Godzilla seeking to smash everything, surely. I just, I don't get it. Brexit I can kind of understand in a way, I can see some of the arguments for it even if I disagree with them. But the degree to which people will dick themselves over for no real explicable reason, that's, that's just beyond me. So maybe you can explain to me why the hell you would vote Conservative either in the general election or the council elections moving forward. When they're determined to strip you of your rights take away anything and everything that's left in public ownership things that we need why the hell would we want to move to a more american health model when we've seen the problems that they have i don't i don't understand and tell me at what level the cost would get high enough that you would admit that maybe it's not worth it just for the sake of being out of the eu i don't know I genuinely want to get out of this country right now, uh, move somewhere better, with a better community spirit that understands the value of social investment and, and so on. But you've got to find somewhere that's left-wing but not pseudo-left-wing, where it's socialist but not PC, and that's a hard thing to find. Zang. <laughs>